Ever wondered what are the different project delivery methods in architecture? Well, you're not alone. Understanding these methods is crucial for architects because they determine your roles, responsibilities, and relationships with clients and contractors. Imagine a dance where each participant has a unique set of steps where the success of the performance relies on everyone knowing their moves. That's what project delivery methods are like in architecture, and as an architect, it's your job to know your steps. We will be exploring six main types of project delivery methods. These include the time-honored design bid build, the advisory role of the construction manager as advisor, the hands-on approach of the construction manager as constructor, the streamlined design build, the collaborative design assist contracting, and the holistic integrated project delivery, or IPD. Each of these dances or methods requires a unique set of steps, skills, and knowledge. So, let's dive into these project delivery methods and understand how they shape an architect's role and responsibilities. Starting with the most traditional method, design bid build, also known as the American classic. The process of design bid build is a three-phase journey, a relay race if you will, that starts with design, transitions into bidding, and culminates with construction. In the first leg, the design phase, the architect is the torchbearer. They are responsible for creating the vision of the project, translating the client's dreams and ideas into tangible blueprints. The architect's role is not just to design but to communicate, ensuring that the client's vision is accurately and effectively translated into a feasible design. The second leg, the bidding phase, is where the architect prepares bid packages. Now these aren't your average parcels. Bid packages are comprehensive sets of documents that provide all the necessary details for contractors to accurately price the construction phase. It's like providing a detailed recipe for the contractor to follow. In the final leg, the construction phase, the architect's role shifts to quality control, making sure the contractor adheres to the design in the bid package. They act as the client's advocate, ensuring that the construction process aligns with the design intent and that the client gets what they paid for. Throughout the entire design bid build process, the architect is the fulcrum, the central figure maintaining balance between the client's vision, the constraints of cost, and the realities of construction. In this method, the architect's relationship with the client and contractor is sequential. They first work closely with the client during the design phase, and then pivot to working with the contractor during the construction phase. Being successful in a design-bid-build method requires a keen understanding of this dynamic. The architect must be a master communicator, a meticulous planner, and an effective problem-solver. They need to be able to translate client desires into a feasible design, compile comprehensive bid packages for contractors, and ensure the integrity of the design during construction. In essence, the design-bid-build method requires the architect to be the central figure, balancing design, cost, and construction. Next up, we have construction manager as advisor. Picture this, an architect and a construction manager working side by side from the project's inception. The construction manager isn't just a bystander, but an active participant, providing valuable advice on constructability, cost, and schedule. This collaboration ensures the architect's vision is feasible and within budget. Now, let's dive into the concept of a control estimate. It's a budgeting tool used by the construction manager to predict the project's cost. The architect uses this estimate to guide their design decisions, ensuring they align with the financial constraints of the project. In this method, the architect and construction manager share a symbiotic relationship. They are two halves of the same coin, each bringing their unique expertise to the table. This results in a more efficient, cost-effective project that meets the client's needs. In this method, the architect shares responsibilities with the construction manager, providing a more collaborative approach. Now, let's consider when the construction manager also takes on the role of constructor. In this model, the construction manager wears dual hats, overseeing both the design and construction phases. This shift in responsibilities can be quite significant. The construction manager, now also the constructor, is the one who brings the architect's vision to life. Let's discuss the concept of bridging. This is where the architect's design is translated into a built form, and it's the construction manager as constructor who makes it happen. The architect provides a detailed design, and the construction manager uses this as a bridge to construct the project. The architect's role here is more than just a designer. They are a collaborator and a communicator working closely with the construction manager. It's all about teamwork and communication, ensuring that the design intent is fully realized in the built project. 
This method requires the architect to work closely with the construction manager, ensuring a seamless transition from design to construction. Moving on to a more integrated approach, the design-build method. In this delivery model, the architect and contractor form one unified team, taking responsibility for both the design and construction of the project. This unity creates a single point of responsibility, which can streamline the process and reduce potential conflicts. Let's talk about transitional forms. In the design-build model, transitional forms come into play when the design and construction responsibilities shift from one entity to another. This transition is smooth due to the integrated nature of the team. There's no passing the baton here. Instead, the team moves together from one phase to the next, ensuring a seamless transition and a cohesive final product. This model requires that the architect be adept at collaboration. They're not just designing, they're part of a team that carries the project from concept to completion. In design build, the architect needs to be adept at collaboration, as they are part of a team that carries the project from start to finish. Design assist contracting is another collaborative method worth exploring. In this approach, the architect takes on the role of a conductor, orchestrating a symphony of key subcontractors during the design phase. This early involvement allows for a smoother integration of design and construction elements, leading to a more efficient and streamlined project. The architect's role extends beyond just design. They are responsible for facilitating communication between all parties involved. This is where multi-party agreements come into play. These arrangements involve all key stakeholders, including the client, contractor, and key subcontractors. Everyone is bound by a single contract, fostering a collaborative environment where everyone's interests align towards the project's success. It's like a well-oiled machine, where each part plays its role to perfection. However, this method requires careful management and clear communication. For success in design assist contracting, the architect must ensure that everyone is on the same page and that the harmony of this well-orchestrated performance remains intact. This method requires the architect to facilitate communication between all parties, ensuring everyone is on the same page. Last but not least, let's take a look at integrated project delivery. This method is all about teamwork, collaboration, and shared goals from the very beginning. In the world of architecture, it's like a well-orchestrated symphony where all the players contribute to the harmony of the final piece. In Integrated Project Delivery, or IPD, everyone involved in the project comes together from the start. We're talking about the architect, the client, the contractor, and sometimes even key subcontractors and suppliers. Everyone is on board from the get-go, sharing insights, expertise, and responsibilities. This early involvement of all parties promotes a culture of collaboration, transparency, and mutual respect, which can lead to more innovative solutions and better project outcomes. Now let's get into the nitty-gritty and talk about single-purpose entities. In an IPD approach, the project team often forms a single-purpose entity. This is a legal entity created specifically for the delivery of the project. It's like forming a temporary company, where each member has a stake. This entity is the contractual hub of the project, and it's where the shared risks and rewards come into play. As an architect in an IPD setup, your role is more integrated and collaborative. You're not just designing, you're part of the decision-making process throughout the project. You work hand-in-hand -hand with the client and the contractor, sharing in the project's risks and rewards. You're literally invested in the project's success, which can be a powerful motivator. Remember, the key to success in IPD is open communication, trust and respect among all parties. It requires a shift from a mindset of individual goals to one of shared objectives. It's not just about delivering a project, it's about creating a synergy that leads to better solutions, efficient processes, and ultimately, a successful project that everyone can be proud of. In IPD, the architect is part of a team that shares risks and rewards fostering a truly cooperative approach to project delivery. Understanding these delivery methods is key to navigating the complex world of architectural projects. Let's quickly revisit what we've learned. In the design bid build method, architects are the central figure, bridging the gap between client and contractor. In construction manager as advisor and construction manager as constructor methods, the architect works closely with the construction manager to deliver value. The design build method simplifies the process with a single contract, while design assist contracting involves the contractor early to streamline the construction process. Lastly, the integrated project delivery method is all about collaboration, with multi-party agreements fostering a cooperative alliance.
Each delivery model has its own set of bid packages, control estimates, and transitional forms. Understanding these elements and the architect's role in each is crucial to your success, whether it's in a project or your architecture registration examination. Remember, the delivery method chosen can significantly impact an architect's role, the project's success, and your architecture registration examination preparation. Choose wisely.